Having everybody after a week off, we well, yeah, yeah. after a week off, we are back with Thrifty Business. Everyone, host Vegas J. What's happening? And with me tonight is Debbie Weeder from Vacaville. Debbie Weeder from Vacaville. How the heck are you? I'm great. Been so long since we hung out. You know, am I echoing? Nope. But if you're echoing to you, then uh, and I, I wrote some I... headphones on, but I'll get those on in a second because right now <laughs> it is time for. Jay's Tiki Talk. Each week, I have a different rum and a different tiki mug, and I try to match them up with our guest. Speaking of our guest, here's our guest, Cecilia Sullivan. Hello, Cecilia. How are you? Hi, Cecilia. Hey, everybody. Hello oh. from San Diego, California. Well, that I'm wasn't glad me. you that said Debbie. that because I, I have, for the first time, I have an overabundance of tiki mugs from our guest location. Usually when we have, like, a North Dakota guest, I don't have any options. But with you, <laughs> I have tons. Awesome. Uh, well, first, let me do the rum. Now, I did not match the rum up with you because I was just in Minneapolis teaching some classes, and I spoke at uh, Susan's uh, meetup in Minneapolis, and the meetup gave me a bottle of Minneapolis rum. Mm. And so it was my first time trying it, but I did grab an extra special San Diego mug because you're on. Ta-da. Ooh, nice. Wow. How's that That's for awesome. cool? Very cool. And that's from I the like grass that. skirt in Pacific Beach. Nice. I will take the top off because I didn't bring a straw, and I will drink out of the head. Excellent. Nice. I have one from San Diego called the Ballast Point. I love this guy's little toes. Yes. And I have just a splash of FTD with some Coke. And then Jason's going to bring up an image, hopefully, so I can give a shout-out to yep, my brother. There you go. This, I'm not brother. My nephew, Ryan Andrews, is named one of the top four mixologists in San Diego, and he has his own bitters, and he makes them in San Diego. And so, so Debbie, you have, a, you have a nephew who's making his own bitters. I, I don't seem to ever recall getting any. Oh, yes, you do, and I think I know right where it is in your bar. It was, I gave you a little bottle, and we set it right on the kind of the corner oh, shelf. Oh, <laughs> then maybe it got stolen. At a oh, party. I'll have to bring you more. <laughs> It was just my cheap way of trying to get more out of you. <laughs> I know. I, I tell them I have to take care of all my friends. Uh, yeah, so check that out. All right, Cecilia, uh, enjoy the show. I'm going to put you uh, in timeout. Just make sure you're not picking your nose in about half an hour. Or, <laughs> or, or be keep, picking your nose. I don't care either way. <laughs> <laughs> keep your clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get right to it. We've been gone for a week working and traveling, and now we're back to share our... Scores of the week. Debbie and I are sharing with you the cool stuff we sold the last couple of weeks. These are bolos. Be on the lookout. Things that you should be hunting for when you're out and about thrifting. Oh, my favorite. I hope you beat the children's books. $89 I sold these for. And I'm trying to remember, I think I paid about $10 for the set. I find these every once in a while, and I pick pieces up and save them because I collect them wherever I'm at, too. So I always have better choices to um, pick from. So look for these books. Levi's jeans. What? Yeah, no, $75. Those I, are $75 jeans? Yeah. The orange tag, the 42, the talon on the zipper bill says that's the vintage. Um, I, I can't remember if these came from the bins or not. They might have. So I might have paid about 89 cents for these. But yeah, these are nice. And, and from the bins, that's even more badass. Yes. Easton Press books, always look for those. Um, this one I accepted a best offer. I think this is the one I accepted $50, best offer $50 on that. So I always look for Easton Press. They smell marvelous because they're leather. <laughs> <laughs> and then a rabbit fur jacket. Isn't this cool? Um, I think I got this at an estate sale for about $5. This guy told me all oh, the clothes were going to be really expensive, but when I made a huge pile, they gave me a really great price. So I think I paid $65 for a huge pile of jeans and this jacket was in there. So rabbit fur still sells. Oh, and before I go, I forgot to, one part of my, uh, my cocktail tonight uh, to surprise me for 
my birthday, our anniversary, something this past year. Stacy had a lime tree planet and oh. a huge lime. So these are our oh. first two limes. So I oh, use the other one for the drink. So fresh out the backyard. Can't get much fresher than that. So cute. They're awesome. All right. So back to my scores. So I always tell you when you're looking at books, the one section, I, I look at three sections, but the one section I always look at first is the music book section. So this is the, the uh, chart music to the songs from the Beauty and the Beast TV show. I paid three bucks for it and I sold it for $50. And you'll see it later in the show as another tip. Oh, can't wait. These are uh, some uh, snowboard boots that looking back at this picture, I wish my assistant would have laced them up. It would have been a little more attractive. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, oh, and I got the wrong price. I sold them for 50 bucks. I don't know why I put 40. Uh, I sold them for nice. 50 bucks and I paid uh, $7 for them. I like the colors. Now, this isn't a huge sale. So you might be thinking, hey, Jay, why are you even wasting our time? showing us a $14 CD sale. Well, two things. I paid a buck. It's a Christmas. Okay, three things. It's a Christmas CD that sold today. And <clears throat> it's housed with a 1999 calendar that won't be good again until 2021. So someone needed a Christmas CD and a 1999 <laughs> calendar today. Now, does the calendar have photos on it or illustrations? Yeah, I think so. That could be why. One of my favorite pair of jeans to tell everyone to pick up and sell is the jeans I wore all throughout the early 90s, Merite Francois Gerbeau. These in red uh, sold for 40 bucks. I picked them up for $7. Check out the loops for the belt. It's in the shape of an M for Merite. Oh, I never noticed that before. That's cool. And I teased this earlier on uh, the uh, little Facebook Live I did in the group. So we're going to be talking about dandruff tonight. I said not my dandruff because I don't have any hair. <laughs> But uh, the name of this CD is Dandruff by Ivor Cutler. I don't know who Ivor Cutler is. I don't know the album Dandruff, but I do know the cover looked interesting to me, and I paid a buck for it, a uh, buck ninety nine for it at a thrift store. Scanned wow. it, liked how it looked on Amazon. Was up for maybe four or five months and sold for fifty dollars on eBay or Amazon. On Amazon. On Amazon. Okay. Oh yeah, I see Amazon. Down there. Score sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes we have duds, and these are our duds of the week. Do not, do not let our mistakes be yours. Oh, okay. I found four boxes of these one day at a thrift store, and I looked up sold, and I was pretty excited. I thought it was going to go for 20 30 or, or more money. And so, as you see, I sold it for $13. Do you know who Marilyn Chambers is, Jason? She was a porn star, wasn't she? Yes. There is boxes of ivory snow where she's the mom holding the baby. Those oh, are the I boxes. I was so hoping you were going to say, and I sold it to Marilyn Chambers. I'm like, oh. no way. No, that's the one you want to find. The ones with Marilyn Chambers are worth like $40, $50, $60 and more. So she was in the early 70s. They put her on there. And then about the mid-70s, she becomes a, part, a porn star. But the buyer that bought this from us, she left feedback and said they, there's a tradition in their family to use ivory snow on their Christmas trees. Okay. So I guess maybe I should let her know I have three more boxes. We've been listing them individually because each box is kind of mangled differently. So we want to make sure they get the box. You know, this is what you're getting. So now we have to list the next one. What are all these little pieces? Yeah. This is, well... Uh, there are tubes, like radio tubes or whatever. A friend of ours does recycled metal, a fabulous artist. So he gave these to us, and Bill looked them up and said they're not worth anything. So we were really bummed because I thought they have to be worth something. So uh, They're just worth filling your trash, unfortunately, Deb. Well, I probably can't even put them in the trash. I probably have to take them to the hazmat people. <laughs> you know me. Follow all the rules. All right, I sold uh, this uh, uh, Dewar Scotch whiskey uh, serving tray for seventeen bucks plus shipping. So, and I only paid a buck, uh, so not you know I made some money, but it was in my store for like three and a half years. Oh wow! So that's one of those. I actually got this from the Riviera closing sale. It was cool. a liquidation sale. So uh, yeah, I made a couple bucks, but yeah, you know you shouldn't have anything lay laying around for three years, especially a twenty dollar item. That's just yeah. a waste. Of, it's a waste of your space and your listings. Yep. And this was my biggest F up in a long time. I'd really like to say the full F word, but I won't tonight <laughs> because these were two decent sized animatronic uh, uh, characters. So A, they were tall, especially Tigger. B, they weighed a lot. 
And for some unknown reason, I only charge $15 for priority shipping. Yeah, priority shipping cost me like $37. No way. Yeah. So when all the smoke cleared and fees and uh, yeah, I lost money. I, uh -huh. I basically paid someone to take this away from me. So whoops. Uh-oh. Well, we all do it. Whoops. All right. But now, and I'm excited because... Where in the world did our stuff go? And both Debbie and I have ones to share this week. Look, Finally. if you are not shipping internationally, you are leaving out 7.3 billion wow. with a B potential customers. Don't limit yourself to just the 330 million that live in the United States. So what'd you sell and where did it go, Debs? I sold, remember you taught us these Hawaiian shirts with the 91 or, or a year, whatever year you taught us that people want the shirt the year they were in Hawaii. Yeah. Um, so my husband had to get a Jersey type shirt to wear to work one time and that's what we got. So we're cleaning out the closet. I'm like, don't throw it away. I think it sold for $39.99. Um, and what? it went, it went to, oh no, I can't remember the name of it. Springvale, Springvale, Australia, which is right by Melbourne. I just couldn't get a map of it. Springvale, Australia. And I had a $20 offer on this and I just kind of was letting it sit. And then all of a sudden it sold for full price to an international buyer. That's awesome. Now I shipped both of mine today, oddly enough, two Hawaiian shirts going to two different customers in, in uh, the UK. One in uh, Evesham, or Evesham, and the other one in Waltham Cross. Whoa. So it, going into October, two guys in in England needed Hawaiian shirts. So those both went off today, and I was very excited to see them go. The one on the left sold for 40 and the one on the right sold for 36 Nice. And I paid like 4 bucks for them, so they weren't all that expensive. All right, so now it is time for our thrifty tip of the week. This segment brought to you by Stamps.com, postage on demand. All you need is a computer, the internet, and your printer to print your postage at home. Okay. If you haven't been into your, if you have a 99 cent store in your area, I didn't make it to the Dollar Tree today. Look at all these amazing Halloween goodies that they have. So you could think about maybe putting some bundles together. Um, I think of uh, grandmas who are can't maybe get out of the house and want to send their little grandkids something for Halloween decorations. Look at all that Um What's it called? Day of the Dead, the skull candy. Um, so put consider sourcing these items for Halloween. And right now, they may not seem like they're selling, but let me tell you, like two weeks before Halloween, people pay crazy amounts of money for Halloween decorations, costume parts. So go through your, your local store, like 99 Cent or Dollar Tree, and see what goodies they have there, because I was blown away at mine today when I walked through there. Yeah, I got a $10 skull and crossbones uh hanging on my truck from last Halloween. And and although my truck is big and pretty, everyone wants to talk about the $10 plastic skull and crossbones. <laughs> so, of course. Yeah, people, they, had, they had skull garland today. A whole bunch of little skulls as a garland. Cool stuff. All right, so my thrifty tip, and I've said this many times, when you sell online, don't sell emotionally. Think of it as a business transaction. When you buy, don't get excited because you found something cool and buy emotionally. So this is a Waylon Jennings CD called The Collection. It's two CDs of his greatest hits. He, of course, sang one of the greatest songs of all time, the Dukes of Hazard theme song, because that's what I grew up watching. And uh, so when I popped it in today to listen to it, Debbie, it's a two CD set. Oh, look out. <laughs> two CDs. Uh -huh. Well, they're both Waylon Jennings CDs, but they're both the wrong CD. <laughs> no way. Yes. So these are two totally different titles. <laughs> this one is Too Dumb for New York City, Too Ugly for L.A., and this one is a country and it's supposed to be the Waylon Jennings collection. So my tip is when you're buying stuff, especially media, make sure it's the right CD in the case. Make sure it's the right video in the case. Make sure it's the right DVD in the case. Make sure. Don't get yes. so excited that Good you're idea. like, you're like, oh no, <laughs> I get home and I'm like, mm, not the right CD. Jason, how many feedback do you have right now? Uh, like 17,000. 17,000. And you're still making shipping mistakes and sourcing mistakes. So I'll tell you what, if there's a Waylon Jennings fan out there that wants those two CDs, I will happily send them to you for free. <laughs> the first person to message me and say, hey, Jay, I want Waylon. I will I will ship this out tomorrow to you. Nice. I'm not sure what's on those two CDs, but I do know the Deuce of Hazards on one because I did hear it. They're just not the right CDs. Well, so why it. why were you listening? Because I don't didn't think you normally listen to CDs that you're gonna resell. Oh, I have a whole shelf full 
That white thing is all full of CDs I want to listen to just in case I'm going to keep them. Oh, so good it wasn't idea. like I was going to resell it. I was going to keep it or or just rip the best Waylon songs to my iTunes. That's what I was going to do. Okay. I got so frustrated. I'm like, oh, I got my thrifty tip for today. Oh, good job. All right. Now it's time for. <laughs> you have got to be shipping me little tips and tricks, what to do and what not to do when it comes to shipping. And uh, someone said they bought 25 CDs. Three were empty. Yeah, definitely check to make sure there's something in there for sure, too. Uh, how do I list something like that? I'm not, Padiddles. I'm going to send it to someone who wants it full free. Oops. All right, Debbie, your shipping tip is? Okay, it's time. Your shipping. eBay store owners have shipping supplies. So you might want to jump on these, the holiday tissue paper and the holiday... Um, tape because they're limited editions and they're going to probably go fast stock up now don't wait till december 25th you want to get your boxes and all the different sizes that you have so if you shop today for better selection and after the show airs they're probably going to run out of yeah, all these see, i haven't done it yet. i probably should do it <laughs> yeah let's, hurry. let's get our own but anyone who knows me knows i don't open my mail or my packages in a timely fashion like bridget sent me a package once that sat on my bar for like three months my unopened packages of last quarter shipping supplies are sitting downstairs. So at least you got them. <laughs> All right. So here's my shipping tip. Typically, when we cut cardboard for shipping, do I keep freezing or do you keep freezing? I don't know. So one of us is. I think it was I think it's you. <laughs> yeah. I, I see it. All right. Let's see how uh all right. I'm gonna switch Wi Fi. I'll drive on for a sec, but I'll be right back. Okay. Talk amongst yourselves. I've always oh, wanted to talk. say that. Oh, look, I got a magnet. Can you see that? When we were in Minneapolis. Can you see that cherry on the back spoon? It up, back it oh, up. sorry. Right there. Um, yep. Look for this Starbucks mug. You probably won't ever find one, but if you do, they're worth about $2,000 because that is the logo symbol for Minneapolis, and Starbucks decided they were going to put it on a mug, and Minneapolis said, no, you're not. So I've heard of at least one person finding one of those mugs and selling it for a lot of money. So I got the magnet at least. <laughs> All right, let me see. Uh, going on? This is weird. Let me try now. Uh, okay, not. Let me try now. Okay, and not. <laughs> <laughs> we got some gremlins. Let me try, let me try now. Uh, this is so weird. All right, so, and this is such a cool thing you want to show us too. Yeah, I'm going to. Deb, so you're talking. I'll put you on. You're talking. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. What are we going to talk about? Um, shipping supplies. <laughs> um, is there anybody in the chat that didn't realize if you're a store owner that you get free supplies? Actually, you know it comes with our membership, but we get a coupon. I am a premium, so I get fifty dollars to spend a month. And I prefer the boxes. I like to have lots of boxes. My husband loves the tissue paper and the tape. So this month, this coupon we just had, I let him, oh no, that was last month. I let him buy whatever he wanted. So we gotta order these new supplies really quickly. How is everybody's sales going? Uh, uh, and you're do you back. hear me? I can hear you, yes. I can see you too. I don't know what to do, because it keeps, so you're sure it's you and not me? Uh, well, I don't know. Because I don't think it's me, but... And where'd Cecilia go? No, she's still there. I just got her, you know. Oh, okay. Because uh, usually I see their, their face. I just see her. All right, my Wi-Fi is back. Let's see if that changes anything. We had a great time in Minneapolis. So the upcoming Cleveland, Houston... Miami, go to the class, buy the class. You will have a great time. Just the camaraderie between each other, people that were meeting. We had a couple that were brand new to the meetup. No one even knew them. And they came. The, of course, the thrifting class had already sold out, but they got to come to the, the, in, the class, um, the A to Z or Death and Bolts class. So it was really fun to meet them and just to see everybody meeting each other. And now we have a, a chat 
through Facebook messaging where we can keep in touch with each other, you know, ask questions or show bolos. So it's a great way to have fun. And I'm telling you what, if you've never been on a pink, par a pink Ferris wheel, drinking a frozen pink margarita, you have not lived. <laughs> it was really fun. We were on our way to a different bar somewhere, and we all screamed, we got to go on the Ferris wheel. It was a little chilly, 42 degrees, but we survived. Mm -hmm. We were at Psycho Susie's, and there were so many of us, we got our own private room. And, of course, being the host that Jason oh, is. You're giving out the rest of the show. Oh. <laughs> 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 if we can get to it. I don't know what the hell's happening. Okay, let's about? see. Uh, let's see. What else can I talk about? Um, uh, so when you when I'm talking, I'm gonna talk. Yep. All right, Deb, you there? Yeah, I'm here. I just didn't want to talk over. So you. I'm I'm gonna reboot the whole computer. It'll it'll screw everything up. You should still be here. Okay. So uh, riff on something. <laughs> <laughs> but be careful what I say because I can't give the rest the rest of the show away. Uh, oh, I have something exciting to What's share. Up? I'm All talking. Right, here I go. I'll be back. Okay. Um, my friend Linda Pacheco entered a contest and then forgot about it, but she won. And so it was uh, the Global Retail Conference in Vegas that starts next Tuesday and runs through Thursday. The tickets are very expensive. And Linda put my name as the person she would take if she won, and she won. And it took us about a week to figure out why did we win these tickets and why did they connect us together. So I'm very grateful to Linda. We fly into Vegas. We the, It was just for the tickets, so we pay, pay our own air. Of course, we'll be staying at Lay Smith's Pug Hotel. Thank you, Jason and Stacy. So we get to go to this uh, conference that's going to be way over our heads. But John Lawson speaking, uh, Eddie Levine, Levine, uh, Robin Johnson. So I know of several uh, speakers that will be speaking there. So we're very excited to have this once in a lifetime for us opportunity to attend the. It's, I think it's the Global Retail or Retail Global. i got to figure out which way that goes. So that's next week that we get to go and hear the speakers, and um, we're really excited. It's Of all the people that got chosen, her name got drawn, and so we get to go do that. So if you ever want to go to the Retail or the Global Retail Conference in Vegas, check it out. All right. I think I'm working. Yay. Welcome back. I, I, think, it, I think it just needed a reboot. My, so I'm sorry, everybody, for that. Uh... That delay of stuff, my bad. All right, so <laughs> let me. Uh, all right, so let me see if I'm on the screen now because when you have to reboot it, yep, there we go. Okay, so here we go. All right, so take, take two. Typically, when we're like doing FOMOs and needing to uh, edit our box sizes, we use scissors. Yeah, and about halfway through, they get stuck, and I don't know what yep. to do. And then if you're older, you don't mind have the grip strength. Yep. That would be this. Me. This is what you need. Oh my gosh. No way. <laughs> this. This is what you need. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. It's called, uh, shit, I don't even have the, what it's called exactly. I saw it on another video and I went right to Amazon and uh, got it uh, two days later. And we were doing, uh, we had to reconstruct a box today for that Doer's Tin. And we had to kind of FOMO it. And so, man, just using that to cut down, cut it down was so much easier. This is old school. Don't use oh, those yeah. anymore. Uh, well, I broke scissors before trying to do that. They just blow apart. Zip snip cutting tool is what oh, I use. Zip snip and sip? No. No, I, no. <laughs> Don't no do it while you're sipping. <laughs> wow. That is pretty awesome. I would be kind of afraid to try it. You said it has um, guards on it. Yeah, so there's two guards. You have to, A, hold this down, this down. Okay. And then, B, push this up here. Okay. Wow. 
That looks yeah. like you could use it in the yard too to cut the weeds or cut yeah. the bushes. Well, no, because it's going to go through this little little here. But my assistant is very kind of on the small side, so I was watching her struggle with the scissors. I'm like, I'm going to get one of these, and now she's like, zing, 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 much easier. Wow, much easier. That's going to be in a lot of Christmas stockings. For yeah, sure. no kidding. All right, let's get back on track now that I've got the computer issue fixed. Now it's time for. eBay tip of the week, little tips and tricks about eBay to help you with your eBay. Okay. My tip when I'm listing jeans, denim, they all look the same. So after when I go live, then I write down like the last six numbers of the transaction, stick it in the bag. I put all my things in Ziploc bags because they go in a bin. That way, when I'm trying to find something, I can throw them everywhere, and they stay all nice and neat, and I just shove them back in. So having the transaction number helps me verify it's the right jeans, it's the right denim, it's the right size. Because you, could, like Jason said the other day, you could have four or five pairs that are the same waist and length, and it's like, which pair? And I don't want to ship the wrong one, so that's my tip. If you don't do Ziploc bags like I do, you can just stick it down in a pocket. Very good tip. Now, mine is sometimes I try to bundle things like Debbie talked about earlier. So that Beauty and the Beast, the music for the piano, I also had the actual soundtrack CD sealed. So I listed it for a little while at 125 bucks. Also, I had this extra large Joker um, uh, basketball jersey and these Joker and Batman new with tags Converse All-Stars with the exact same Joker face on. Now, they didn't come together. I threw it to them separately. But I thought, I'll try and put it together as a bundle. Now, two customers reached out to me. One said, hey, I just want this jersey. Mm -hmm. And one said, hey, I just want the book. So listening to my customers, and, and they've been listening for a while, I was happy to, A, sell the jersey for 40 bucks to an international customer in Germany, Yay. and then, B, sell the book for 50 bucks to a customer here in the United States. Then I just nice. I, I relisted the CD and relisted the shoes. So try things outside the box. Try to bundle things. If your customer says, hey, I only want one part of that bundle and it's been up for a while, don't be afraid to get rid of the bundle and just split them up. We have that happen to us quite often when we have a whole set, a whole lot of books. One guy wanted only one out of the, I think I had 30 Star Wars books sold. He wanted one out, which means I had to redo the listing, take the, retake the pictures. Now, so one of 30, I might not redo the listing, but if you have a listing with two things, I know. if someone wants <laughs> one, then yes, I would definitely be like, yeah, sure, what the heck. All right, we all know what's trending at this time of year. And yes, it's Halloween. I sold, uh, I've been shipping Halloween stuff all week. Nice. So I just wanted to show you, I sold this nice uh, spider web poncho that I thought was a skirt at first. I sold uh, this Dorothy Wizard of Oz, official Wizard of Oz uh, costume. And the best part, Deb, it went to Kansas. Woo! Of course. <laughs> and I sold this Sally Ride costume, too. Nice. And I sold the Halloween candle today. So if you're not getting your Halloween stuff up, you're already way behind the time. So get to it. All right. And last but not least, we have a great viewer tip. Oh, wrong one. <laughs> I meant this one. <laughs> nice. Okay, we have a viewer tip from Jane Matthews. She's in our thrifting board group. When selling sports gear, take a few seconds and look up their team colors because your buyers might be searching for an item by that color. Longhorns, burnt orange. The Sooners, crimson red. Of course, her and I are both Seahawks fans, so we had to put this in. The navy blue and action green is Seahawks. And for Cleveland for Jason, I put the Browns, brown and orange. So if you have room in your title, you want to put it in there. You, you can do it in your description, your item specifics. And this is just a little side note. These team colors actually have legitimate codes, hex codes for their colors. You can even go buy paints for, for your team colors. So this is just a little tip. Thank you, Jane. Add the team colors in just to help your buyers find your item faster. So uh, I'm glad you did that as a tip because what I wanted to add was how sad the Browns are just brown and orange. I know. I even I actually looked them up just to make sure, and I was like, yeah. But it, here's what's weird about me. You know how we all have something that we that we remember from a long time ago that we shouldn't remember? Like, why do you remember? So I worked for Domino's in 1988 through like 91-ish, give or take. 
So many, many years ago, and back then, the three official colors of Domino's was burnt orange, Arctic white, and processed blue. And I still remember that <laughs> to this day. So why I remember the exact colors, I have no idea. Did, I just you, was... did you have to know the exact colors to work there? I mean, No, did... you didn't have to know them, but but you couldn't use things outside those three. Like if you're going to make right. like your own flyers for your local store, you had to use burnt orange, True. processed blue, and Arctic white. So there's yes. my little nerd. Thank and here, here's a little tip for my merch friends. We design t-shirts on merch. You cannot use their colors because they're trademarked. Yep. All right. little housekeeping before we get Cecilia in here. Those of you in the Seeker Beach, Typhoon Ooh. Summer Tomorrow, the return of summer. <laughs> now, Summer gave us a webinar once before on intro to Pyrex. We're totally switching gears here and going to kids' clothes because this is like summer's. Uh, summer decided to have enough kids to have a basketball team <laughs> with a bench. With a bench. Not just nice. a team, with a bench. And nice. uh, so those of you in the Seeker Beach, tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. West Coast, 2 p.m. East Coast. Yeah, I screwed that up the other day. Uh, so don't forget to tune in for that. Cute family. Those of you in the Cleveland, Joggett County area, my mommy's having a garage sale Woo! tomorrow and Saturday. Got tons of stuff, working great deals. Same and job. if you're a member of the Thrifting Board and you've never been, she uh, should be happy to maybe make you a cocktail, give you a tour of her tiki bar. Speaking of that, my mom is the expert at throwing garage sales. That's where I learned all my business. So for this Sunday, selling past your expiration date, being thrifty over 50, we are going to talk about not, not, not only how to have a successful garage sale, but how to have a season ending garage sale. The seasons never end here, but they do in Cleveland. So this is probably the last weekend safely to have a garage sale in Cleveland because it'll probably snow in three days. Then it'll be 80. Then it'll hail. Then it'll rain. And then it'll be 72. And then it'll snow again. That's a week of Cleveland weather for sure. So I don't have the exact time on Sunday, but just stay tuned to all my locations and uh, we will have a time for you. But make sure to stop by and tell my mom you're from the thrifting board. Or you're from the Seeker Beach. Okay, I have a question. Is everything yeah. 25 cents at her garage sale? No, but she'll cut you deals. And mom just said in the chat, cocktails are ready. She makes a mean Ooh. painkiller. Wow, that's the garage sale to go to. All right, speaking of Cleveland, coming up, I got three more classes before the end of this year. Next week is Houston. Do my Houston class. Uh, the only class is doing this way Saturday and Sunday next week. And then November 2nd, 3rd, I'm in my, back in my hometown of Cleveland where for sure it'll snow because I'm coming home. <laughs> and then the opposite of that is we'll be in Miami November 30th through December 1st. So nice. if you want to get signed up, the link is down below, but you can just go to www.classwithjason.com. The Houston class is almost full up. So I know a couple of people are signing up on Monday. That should about fill us up. So cool. uh, don't hesitate. Get signed up. We definitely got some spots left in Cleveland and Miami. And we always have a cool Tiki Bar hangout. So here is the class from Minneapolis. It was my biggest class so far. I usually cut it off a certain point. I, I wasn't paying attention. We went <laughs> way bigger than I expected, but it was an awesome class. We had a fun time because not only did we do the classases, we had a private party at a tiki bar where we had our own room. Yes, I, I've we never, did. I've never been the reason of a velvet rope before, so that was kind of cool. I never got to see the private party sign. That's a nice picture. Yeah, that's kind of cool. And then coming up, October 18th or 20th. So Deb, right from Houston, I'm leaving for Chicago because it is Ecom Chicago. It is the greatest Midwestern uh, Ecom Commerce, one of the the best smaller conference. Uh, and look at look at this list of this lineup of, of speakers, Deb. It's a who's who of who's been on Thrifty Business. Suzanne, Chris, Glenn, Brianna, Robin, Barbara, uh, me. You, oh no, you're not there. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> so, uh, if you if you have not signed yet, not signed up yet, get signed up and use Jason Thrifts when you check out. You'll save twenty bucks. But here's the greatest thing, Deb. It's a three day event. Day one start. Or, uh, it used to be two day. The they end of the third day. So day one last year, they let all the sponsors demonstrate their products. So you could sit and you can see how like. Bubble Fast works or Ink Frog works or whatever the sponsors were. But this year they're doing that and they're doing a coach's corner. So half the people you see here are doing a coach's corner and you get to sign up for free as part of your you know admission to the to the event. But you get to sit with these coaches. So you could spend all Thursday sitting with all these different leaders wow. in the community for, for part of your price. That's worth more than the price of mission alone. Then you got then you got all kinds of learning Friday and Saturday. 
They get, they got a karaoke party. I do a tiki bar hangout. It is a great weekend. So head over to ecomchicago.com, get signed up. Jason Thrifts is the $20 off. And I've only got two or three slots left for my coaching. My coaching is almost sold out. Nice. So make sure you get signed up. I, I, if I were you, I'd go see me. I'd go see Lawson. I would go see Chris. Uh, I would go, Brian Burke's almost full up too. And uh, I would definitely pop in and see Robin Johnson. And Glenn Zubia. Yep. I'm glad too. Yeah. So get signed up. My mom and dad will be hanging out. So it'll be a fun weekend. So come see us. And next week, who's our guest, Debbie? Eddie from Sizely. Sizely is a, I don't know exactly how to describe it. It's for measuring. It's a, you can put it in. Oh no, did Debbie freeze? Or am I froze again? Are you froze? I think, uh, I think it was both of us, but, uh, Sizely is awesome. If you, if you don't know what Sizely is, you want to tune in for sure, but it's a cool thing to help you when you're selling clothing on eBay. Yes, cool. exactly. That was exhausting. <laughs> All right, let me uh, let me get uh, our guest in here. You know, every once in a while, technology makes us uh, have to really uh, scramble to get stuff done. All right. So I think, all right, so Debbie, I had you up there. All right, let's try this now. I'm glad you know how to work all this because I would be yeah. lost. <laughs> oh, so great question real quick before I get to our guest. Do we sign for the coaching on the e-com site? Yes, they have a link directly to the coaching. It shows you all the um, uh, speakers, uh, coaches, and uh, the, the time slots. They're 20-minute time slots. So make sure you go sign up and it'll show you this time slot and what's left. So like I said, I only have, uh, when I checked earlier today, I only had like two or three left and uh, you, I would fill up your whole day with it. It, it. It's so worth, look, it's only like 200 bucks and then minus 20 bucks. So it's 170 bucks, 180 bucks. You get three days of learning, but to have access to all of us. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at your eBay store and give you all kinds of tips and tricks on how to make sure to improve your listings and your store. Uh, John Lawson, I'm sure, is going to be talking about how to use social media to your benefit. Robin Johnson is going to be talking about how probably to expand your reach and, I mean, expand using different platforms. So, and this is the time to grab one of those coaches of something you don't do. Right. Like my boy David flips iPhones. You've, if you've never flipped an iPhone, now, now that you've already paid for the event, go sit with him for 20 minutes and find out what it takes to flip an iPhone. Oh, I hope he's a coach. Uh, I don't even know. Uh, <laughs> well, hit him up in the hallway. Yeah, absolutely. So this is the time to sit for 20 minutes and realize, do I want to do something else? And it, and if you listen to over 20 and you're like, nope, like I'm sure Chris Green's talking about merch. If you haven't done merch yet, Chris is going to school you for 20 minutes on merch. If you don't like what you hear, then you're like, all right, merch ain't for me. Yep. Now, is that free? There's not an additional cost. No, there's not an additional cost. So it's part of wow. it's part of your, you know, your fee. And so uh, it's awesome. a pretty bitching event. And it's a fun <clears throat> event. All right. I think I've got to see it. All right. Let's try this. Woo! Hey, Cecilia. Hey. hey what's up, everybody? Cecilia. So sorry for the delay, Cecilia. <laughs> that was, uh, you know, sometimes technology just says poo-poo on you. <laughs> poo-poo ka -choo. And when you're live, you just got to deal with it and, and hustle on, you know? Absolutely. So uh, welcome to the show. That's you so much for having me. It's wonderful to be here. I, I got to hey, say- I, I, uh, I didn't get a chance to show my cocktail. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, oh. I have some cheap Bacardi and Diet Dr. Pepper in the Godfather Snoop Dogg glass. Cool. Now, shouldn't awesome. that be gin and juice? Well, I don't like gin, for one thing. <laughs> this is what I had on hand. So, hey. Oh, I, I don't Snoop like it, but you know, Snoop Dogg. <laughs> I got to say, though, I didn't like gin for the longest time either. And our friend uh, owns the premier rum bar in the world in San Francisco. And then he opened a gin bar and he started with 400 gins. So I'm like, all right, I go check this out. And I had some good gin cocktails. And so lately I've been getting into gin cocktails. I don't know what happened, but you know, your taste change as you, as That's you get right. older. Good to keep an open mind. Hell yeah. All right. So Cecilia is on for one reason and one reason only. <clears throat> she asked, no, just kidding. No, <laughs> no we asked her. Yes. A lot of people who are watching have either done this or want to do it and maybe are afraid. But Cecilia was in the corporate world and said, yep, I had enough of this. 
suck my soul right out. Now I'm going to go work for myself and work in the e-commerce world. And based on the glow I can see on her face, it has done her well. Very much so. You know, it's just, for me, it was just the real freedom to truly live my life the way I want to live under my own rules. And it was amazing. And I totally could not have done it without my 100% so supportive, wonderful husband, Pete. He was hey, the Pete. one that said, you've got to stop um, and just support it, has supported me all the way. So it so, really, really helps if you want to do this, if you have a partner, a life partner who is all in too. So let's back up though. Let's let's talk about what you were doing. So you live in, we know we live, you live in San Diego because of course I introduced the mug yes. and what a great place to live. I lived in, uh, my wife and I lived in uh, the Belmont Shore area of Long Beach, which was kind of like a small version of San Diego. And uh, I love that area down there. So you got to think, oh my gosh, you're in San Diego, one of the greatest weather cities in the United States. Mm -hmm. How could you be unhappy doing anything? So what were you doing and what, what, what about it made you unhappy? Well, uh, I have had many different gigs over my lifetime. Uh, and the most recent one I had was in the insurance industry. So it's not like I had this lifelong dream to, you know, be involved with insurance or anything. It's something I kind of fell into and I was good at things. And so I kept getting promoted and I had gone to the one that, you know, the end of the line at one company. So I just started exploring other companies agencies and this isn't and that and it just finally i just decided it's just this is just bad for me it's bad for my life to be just so caught up in trying to earn a buck that i'm going and doing these things that i don't want to be doing for people that i don't care about and so as i might have mentioned you know i'm coming home every day from work miserable just miserable. And that's just no way to live. And of course, your spouse is going to pick up on that. And finally, Pete just says, you know, I can clearly see that you're very unhappy about your work situation. So I encourage you to quit your job and do what you want to do. And of course, then I said, well, I have, you know, I've been seeing this storage wars thing oh. on TV. So maybe I want to check that out for a minute. And I did. And so anyway, I quit my job. You know, we were lucky enough to have, you know, the financial wherewithal for me to do that. So that's the first thing. Uh, and secondly, just, I will encourage everyone to just be very brave and just walk through that door you don't think you can go through. Just do it. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? So that's kind of the attitude I had going in. The worst that could happen was that it didn't work out. I couldn't make it happen. And I would just go and get some other, you know, try some other industry among the oh, yeah. many I had tried up till now. So I just started going for it. And we did the storage lockers. And while I wouldn't do that anymore, I, uh, I really le we learned so much during that time. Oh, I so bet. I don't know if I'm getting kind of ahead of the story anyway. Well, so so what what my hope is uh, that you're going to answer this question the way I want you to answer it. Did you quit in spectacular fashion? <laughs> you know, I didn't. I, uh, I just really always like to take the high road. And as much as I wanted to tell those people what I truly, truly thought of them, you know, I just didn't want to burn that bridge. That's just smart. in case. That's Somebody smart. would circle back and, and contact them and, you know, it, and they would give an impression of me. You know, I don't want to leave a bad impression. So I did everything. The worst thing I did was leave at lunchtime on my last day instead of <laughs> going the whole day. I was just like, you know what? I'm out. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> It felt so good, though. It felt so good. And if I felt so excited, nervous, anxiety, scared, freaked out. Oh, my God, what am I doing? You know, I'm a, I must be crazy. You know, sometimes but, you just have to jump. You know, I'm at a time and again, I'm at a time in my life where it's like, you know, my kids are older and, you know, I can really just do what I really want to do. And this is what I really wanted to do. And, and it's been wonderful, really, well, really wonderful. 
Well, so I understand that your husband had been selling on eBay before you, and he's the one that taught you. Is that correct? That well, partially is correct. He had been selling on eBay like since the '90s, mostly media, magazines, records, you know, random stuff like that. Um, so he kind of showed me the ropes, helped me kind of get started up, you know, doing eBay. Oh, that's good. So you kind of had a safety net a little bit. You knew what you were getting into. A little bit. I mean, I didn't know whether, you know, it's always like, will the things I pick be yes. something that somebody else wants to buy? And really, that's really the question you still ask yourself today, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, so that's always the question. And of course, everybody knows when you when you first start out, you buy some real crap. <laughs> just, oh, yeah. Crap still sells, so though. Much. <laughs> I mean, just like straight up crap. But nobody wants this crap. But it's only a dollar. Pretty much, pretty soon you have a big pile of stuff that's worth a dollar a piece of crap. So, you know, you just kind of evolve as you go on. Yeah. So, uh, again, I don't know if I was, like, getting ahead or off topic or anything. No, no, no. You know, I, I was I was there too. For those who don't, you know, maybe you're new to watching me. If you don't know my story, I'll give you the quick abbreviated version. Uh, I worked for a friend who had a hot tub store and my wife had told me not to do it because working for friends never works out. And oh boy, was she right. And so it became this miserable job where I hated it. But because I met him because he was friends with my parents, I felt I could never leave. I just felt that I, you know, I'd be letting, because it was a family operation. It was him and his wife and their little daughter would be in the playpen in the office I worked out of. So I watched Nemo every day. Oh, no, you love kids. So <laughs> I just felt I couldn't ever leave. And I ended up getting an infection in my arm that almost killed me. And for those of you wow. who've never seen it, this is what my arm looked like after the infection. Oops. After the infection uh, healed, but I had, they had to cut out all the muscle tissue uh, out of my arm. Uh, because I had this crazy infection. Yeah. Yikes. I've, I've lost myself. So hold on a quick second. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah, my arm was was uh, a hot mess. And I, I was miserable. And so I'm in the hospital for five days. I had five, uh, two operations to basically save my arm, save my life. And my friend who I worked for, who I wouldn't quit because I would feel bad, never came and visited me once. <gasps> No way. And I, I got the I got the infection because I got a cortisone shot because I got tennis elbow from working at a store. And so I was miserable. And those five days I laid in the hospital, I realized that I had to do something to change my life because I felt like you, Cecilia. I was just like, my soul is gone. It oh. just sucks. And I also luckily had a spouse who had a great job and I could make that leap full time. And I realized that first month after I quit and just went really focus on eBay, I made just as much on eBay as I did at the job I was working at. I'm like, what was I doing busting my ass when I could just sit in my underwear in this office and work and make the yeah. same money? Now, wait, were you in Las Vegas or Cleveland when you yeah, were Yeah, I was there? in Vegas. You were in Vegas. Okay. Mm. Wow. In the hot heat, too. Yeah. And so this is what the scar is now. It's my shrunken head. Oh, nice. So the hair <laughs> is where the scar is. So it's one of those rare tattoos that has texture. <laughs> nice job. Yeah. You know, I'm always, I'm always thinking about things. <laughs> So if you have any scars you want to cover up, ask Jason to design a tattoo for you. So uh, so you made the leap, and the first day you made it, did you have that second thought where you're like, whoops? Yes, and, and not just the day after, but, you know, probably for about a year, maybe even two years. You know, it takes time. It really takes time. Um, and I... I I was trying a lot of different things though during those times and I just learned so much during the two years, different places for sourcing and different uh, platforms to sell on or at um, that I'm applying all of those things now and I still continue to learn new things every day. Don't we all? <laughs> yes. Um, so anyway, um, so it's your husband, been, it's been wonderful. So your husband helps you do some of your picking. I, I like well, you. He say also, he, we both like to pick. He also likes to pick. And so we go like what we primarily go to estate sales. Oh, smart. that's where we pick. 
And in San Diego, there's some really great places, great, interesting neighborhoods. And people that live in San Diego are from all over the world. It's a big military town. So people True. are come here from all over the world. And so estate sales is the number one thing that we do. So we'll kiss each other at the front door at the estate sale and then <laughs> head in different directions. And we both look for different things. And that's awesome. It's, it's awesome and fun. And then we come back at the end and show each other, you know, what we got. And it's, it's really fun. So he does that, you know, kind of as a sideline too. And, you know, he's gotten back into it, of course, since I've been doing, you know, I'm like, well, why don't you just come out with me? And now we go out usually every weekend to the sales. How fun. So you did a lot of mid-century modern. So that's, you that's an right. For so that. the first thing I kind of was into is furniture. So we, we did the storage locker thing and, you know, during that same time I was going to this auction, it was like a charity, St. Vincent's auction every day and they would have furniture. So I would be grabbing up some furniture at this auction, cheap, like 10 bucks, learning I can you know, flip it real fast. So I started buying furniture and then of course it started filling up our house. Oh yeah. And then at a certain <laughs> point we're like, okay, we're gonna take the, we're gonna take the splurge and we're gonna get a warehouse space. So, so we did that and, um, you know, focusing primarily on furniture, big pieces of furniture, uh, mid-century and vintage, funky vintage, like anything post-war, you know, 40s to, you know, even up to the 80s, like Memphis uh, group type of stuff. Wow. So, and that was, it was fun and everything, but, you know, it takes a physical toll loading and unloading all that stuff. And, um, and it's just, a, it's a tough, it's, tough there's a lot of competition mm -hmm. specifically in that uh, area here in our city um and so you know it's it was hard for a, a single person to kind of really make the mark but we did that did it well and uh at, at a certain point it, the planets began to align and it was time for me to let that part of it go and move on to new things we did the big home downsize so we've already done that. Um, my neighbor at the warehouse asked to take over my lease right at the same time because it Perfect. didn't expand. And so that it just it was just time. Okay, what I really need to do is make this a really lean, mean eBay machine. And so that's kind of what I've morphed into now. All right, you got uh, you sent me some pictures of your eat lean mean machine. So let, let's take a look at them because you you've you know you've really got your uh, your office space dialed in properly. Nice. Yes, yes that's uh, I don't know if everyone can see that. There we go. Um, now they can. Uh, I see I see your coworker there. <laughs> he looks real, and I have that bird clock. There, which coworker are we looking? I can't see. Captain what you Picard. Guys so cl click on the square where you see. Oh here. yes, yes, that's Captain Jean Luc Picard, and he, uh, you know, I've got the window blocked out there. That's the window, so I've got it all super nailed down and tight shut. It's, and and Jean Luc's been lurking around that room looking for a place to end up, and it's like, you know what? He's gonna stand right there. So he's kind of my muse, and when I start getting frustrated, I just look over there, and it's like, okay, I know what I need to do. Oh, that's cool. I love it. <laughs> Oops, wrong one. Uh, whoops, wrong one. Uh, hey, where's the one? Ah, I had the one of your nice little shelves. Where'd they go? Hold on a minute. You had a great little shelving unit. Cool stuff. Well, yeah, was, uh, uh, technology is not being my friend tonight. I'll tell you that right now. All right, so that little talk. flea market there in the parking lot outside the warehouse space, where I would invite people to come, mostly to get people inside my door. So I would let people come for free out in the park and do like a car boot, you know, junk in the trunk kind of thing. And I met a lot of really cool, awesome people. One of whom is Juanita. Yes, Captain hey Juanita, lurking around the board. And um, so we had, I had a ton of fun, you know, we did a lot of fun things. We even put some music shows on there in the warehouse uh, with my little duo with my husband, Pete. And so it was, it was fun and we just had a great time with it. That, uh, <laughs> We have to give a shout out to Juanita because that's how we found you. Thank hey, you, Juanita. Juanita is my sister from another meester. We're both <laughs> white girls with Hispanic names. <laughs> <laughs> is that uh, in this picture? Is that a paint by number of the Last Supper? Yes, it absolutely <gasps> is. 
That's cool. That. Nice. It is that. That it is. Now, is this all for sale? Is that all for sale? That was just a photo of my of what I had going on inside the warehouse. I had okay. all the stuff in there. And you can nice. see there, you know, I had kind of a mid-century modern vibe thing. Now, cool. this photo you're showing here is a closet, the most useless closet in the world. The one you just popped on there. There we go. It was the most useless closet in the world, so we blew the whole front of it out. Now it fits a bunch of 17-gallon bins in there. So I can have, let's get four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24. Nice. So 32 bins it will fit right there in my office. Yeah, and mine uh, uh, Mine was kind of the same way because this is just a regular bedroom. So there's uh – -huh. uh, where, where am I at here? There's the closet. Right. And so we just took the doors off. And the mm -hmm. guy who built Celine Dion's closets built my Whoa. closet. Whoa. There's, my claim, nice. there's my claim to fame. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty hot. All right, I bet so, hers was bigger than yours. Oh, yeah. Because he, <laughs> he, I only know this because he had taken out these custom CD shelves that he had built for her. And they were really nice, and I really loved them because I still have four thousand CDs on display. And he wanted me to buy them cheaply, and I loved them. But the way they were built, it, it, I couldn't fit them in my house properly. Oh, it's so not like er, I would love to have Celine Dion CD shelves just to say, "Hey, look, these are Celine Dion's." <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about your scores and duds because the variety of products you sell. Look, you started in mid-century modern, but you quickly realized, "Hey, I got to go bigger than that." The variety of products you sell are pretty amazing. I was looking at your scores and duds for that matter. So let's uh, let's roll through all these things here. Let's start with your uh, your your little witchy poo here. Oh, the the witch puppet there. I bought that. Uh, a church rummage sales. If you're not going, you need to go. Yes. Because I bought that for fifty cents at a church rummage sale. And it sold, I can't exactly see the price. Uh, 53. $53 plus nice. ship. Nice. Uh, like within the, a week, that one just flew out the door. I always price high. I price everything at the top, especially when it's newly listed. So um, and then I gave act. her a quick bath and then she went on to a new place. <laughs> Whoa. I, lo I love me some uh, Bloom County and Bill the Cat. Bill the Cat. Build the cat, uh, and so I'm told. I'm a total bottom feeder, and I go on the very last day of estate sales at the like the last half hour. I picked up build the cat for five dollars. Wow! And wow. he sold right again right away within the first couple of weeks. He was on his way to his new home. So I do look for plush, at, like specific, like you know, character plush, just like you're showing. Once I had Einstein the dog from Bass to the Future, and I think I got a hundred bucks for him. Wow. Nice. Yeah. I'm going to start asking her to price my stuff for me. <laughs> okay. Here's something that if I just saw them, I would have no clue what the hell these things are. Neither. I didn't know quilts had templates. Okay. Uh, me neither. But <laughs> I, so those, I pick up any kind of like gadgety thing that is sewing quilting related because some of these things can go pretty high. So I bought, I paid $2 for the eight plates that you see there. Um, I couldn't really find that much on my quick search, but I thought, what the heck, it's two bucks. Uh, right. So yeah, I, again, I priced them high and they flew out the door. So always, if you go to estate sales, they always have a room. Oh, this one I bought at a rummage sale, and there's always sewing craft items. Don't pass that up. Look at it. Nice. So we, we go from plush and quilt uh, to uh, St. John collection suit. Oh, I have yet to find a St. John. Um, me too. Is, <laughs> that was another uh, rummage sale, church rummage sale. Uh, I, I, I paid $72 for eight pieces of St. John. This was two of the eight pieces. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Go. Quick, the, wow. the quick, fast sale. And they were beautiful. No holes. They didn't need cleaning. Perfect. And I was kicking myself that I didn't go back and gave them an offer on the whole pile because they had an entire rack. And I was kicking myself. Oh man, I should go back and get those. And you bet the next time I will. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. I learned about St. John though from the thrifting board. That's nice. awesome. I never knew about that before. 
All and right, the now, plush. I never looked at plush before the thrifting board either. That is so great to hear. So if you're not part of my group, the thrifting board, come on over and join us, won't you? Yes. All right. Yeah. Now an empty box, basically. An <laughs> empty box. My friend is a guy who likes nice things and he has money to spend on them. And this was just a pile of, in a pile of stuff he gave me when he was moving. It was an empty watch box and it sold the next day. You see that I got for free for, you know, $38 plus ship. So are you saying you sold someone else's trash? Yes. Yes, I'm saying that exactly. <laughs> love it. All right. Now, I, I love teaching about cassettes. I, I, I don't even know what the hell this is. Oh, I oh, love it when Jason says that. Around? What the heck? Oh, the Lazarus? No. Okay. Lazarus. So there was a time in my, you know, I've been a searcher along my life, you know, spiritually speaking. I've tried religion and different types. And one of the things I got into for a while was the whole channeling thing back in the 90s. There was these people that were saying I'm channeling this ancient spirit and I have, you know, wisdom from, you know, the other side to share with you. And I remembered this name Lazarus. And so I was, I stumbled into an estate sale and they had, I probably bought, it was like 200 of these clamshell boxes that I bought for 20 bucks. Wow. And you can see how much I got for six of them. Wow. $35. I've made oh, hundreds dear. of dollars from this Lazarus thing. I've only got one lot of them left. I, I kind of batched them up, you know, by topic. So don't overlook cassette tapes, weird stuff, religious stuff like that. Wow. And you charge shipping too. I do charge shipping. And you stumped me on some cassette that I never would have looked at and you made a ton <laughs> of money off of it. Nice. That's what, we, that's what we love to see. And then oh. let's take another left turn. How about a mailbox? <laughs> a mailbox. Uh, I picked this up for four bucks at the AMVETS. AMVETS in our city, there's an outside area where they put like the real straight up junk that really nobody wants. It's headed for the landfill or whatever. Uh, so I picked that up for four bucks. Nice. And it sold right away. Like I said, within the first, you know, I didn't, it never relisted. It's banged up. It's got another number on it, but <laughs> I mean, how much is that new that someone paid you fifty bucks plus shipping? I don't even understand. Well, I mean, it was this I one I don't get. I just I couldn't <laughs> find any. I couldn't really find any comp, so I I just go okay. I'll just throw a price out there and see if somebody would pay it. And by God, somebody did. So aim high. Shabby, don't... shabby distress. That's what got him. Well, I want to be honest about what it is. It's oh, banged yes. up, you know, but it. there's no dents in it, but it's scraped. It's scratched. It's ready for its makeover. So, yeah, aim high. Don't be on a race to the bottom. I love it. Words to live by. Oh, this this I love, but um, <laughs> I, I was shocked by this price. I have sold other vintage typewriters with the case and stuff. I have never gotten any this high, so I'm very impressed. She's the queen of high. Oh, well, yeah, no this kidding. one, I mean, it appeared to be just like a super special one. And people were getting good money for it. So again, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask something that I don't think I can get, and I don't have best offer. I do not have best offer. So I don't well, know. This one sold really fast too. I think it was only listed less than sixty days, and it sold for full price. That's awesome. Love it. Now uh, I want to point out one thing that I did when I so I haven't sold a vintage one in a while, but I I have. I did one on Thrift Hunters. Uh, I th the page that you included, Cecilia, with a quick brown fox from Door Lazy Dog. Uh -huh. I did that, but I did a video of me typing that out, so I really uh -huh. showed that it worked very well. And I didn't have the manual with it, but you can pretty much find any manual online in PDF form for even old things. So I found it. I printed it out. I was the only person that showed a video of it working, and the only person who had the manual with it. So mine sold quick, but not. It wasn't a three hundred dollar one. It was only a hundred and ten dollar one. But I was still happy. Now, how did you ship that eighteen dollars expedited shipping? It was so heavy. Uh, it must have just gone somewhere to California then. Probably it must have been not <laughs> not so far from where I am. Okay. So the um the video is a good idea. I do use videos a lot when I have anything that moves or flashes or makes a sound. But I never thought about it for the typewriter, and you can bet I'm going to do that on my next typewriter. Oh, and, and I so exaggerated typing, too, just to make it fun. <laughs> Did you have music on the background? <laughs> no, we didn't. Now, this is cool. 
This oh. is, I mean, they've all been cool, but this was like, I've never seen this wow. band from normal. I love that. I want one in my size. Adidas. Oh, too. Um, well, I, I saw that and then I looked in the tag and I recognized the name Rita Ora and I know her to be a pop star. So Ooh. I'm thinking it's a celebrity, you know, rock, you know, a pop a music related um adidas you know mashup so there's two different ones and that one i yeah that one too i'm nice. sure i picked that up at a, a, a rummage sale for a dollar or two dollars something like that if you're not going to rummage sales you have to go plus the rummage sales the last 30 minutes they'll say get fill up a bag we fill up a bag for, you know, a $5 a bag and they'll give you like a 10, like the little uh, office trash bag, fill up a bag. Nice. Now I wouldn't even pause and looked at this light cover. Me neither. <laughs> Torshier. A dollar, I paid $1 for that. The Crazy. mil, the Torshier lamp shades, you know, it goes on the top of a lamp. So really, the the picture that shows the small end down is really the way that it goes on the lamp. It goes like on a floor lamp and pointing up. Okay. So I, I pick up lamp shades, glass lamp shades. In fact, I just have four I'm going to be listing here this week. All kinds of different glass lamp shades like that. I pick them up. Fun. Do you just do you just pick up the vintage or do you pick up more current styles too? I typically just grab the vintage ones. Okay. Now your duds uh, didn't really look like duds, but I'm guessing maybe based on what you paid. Well, so the story on this one was I bought the I bought a bowl and a lid, the whole set, and I got it home and I found like a a crack. It wasn't like a crack, like a, where the I don't know. It was a weird looking crack on the bowl. So I'm like, crap. Mm -hmm. I paid for the whole set and I'm not going to be able to get any money for it. Okay, great. So then I tried to sell just the lid. And so I had just the lid for sale, but then I found another bowl. So then I did it again, you know, then I just did a whole brand new listing. So it was just like going to, it was too much time oh, invested. Yeah. You know, sense. I like to just be done and move on to the next thing. So to me, it was a dead because it was too much time, that I, makes I, sense. too much work in it. So the, the lesson here is when you're buying things that are breakable, you really got to look at them super close unless you're getting it for like, you know, a quarter. Yeah. And uh, our friend Stephanie was doing the questions in the chat tonight. Hi, Steph. Uh, Steph? She, she wants to know if you have an assistant. No. All you. It's all me. Nice. Ooh. All, all right. Again, 30 bucks based on how much you pay for stuff normally. I would think, oh, that's how's that done? Well, it sat and sat and sat. I probably, I had that for at least two years, those mm -hmm. at different price points. So it was a dud because I just don't like stuff sitting around that long. Yes. I liked it and I thought somebody else would like it. So yeah, now I, I learned cool. a lesson that maybe no, because I was saying they looked kind of spooky, Halloween-y, you know, kind of gothic, haunted house scene. So then I was, you know, I don't know. It just didn't work, and again, they just sat around and took up space for way too long, and, and it bummed me out. <laughs> so I, I was glad to get anything for them. I think they're cool, too, and I, here's my only thought that maybe would have helped sell them better or quicker. Uh, throw the candles in there. Yeah, well, they didn't have, like, a little insert. It was just the candle just has to sit on top oh, of the okay. thing, right? So you got, to like, those fatty candles. But, yeah. yeah, I agree. If I had showed it with candles, people might go, oh, actually, that's kind of bitching. Yeah. You know, some people can't can't <laughs> visualize, you know? Right. Some people just don't have that skill. <laughs> that's right. You got to help them visualize. All right, what else here? Again, all, all your duds are in the $30 area. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, those are cool. The world's fanciest frisbees. Oh, <laughs> the bamboo well, plate chargers. <laughs> those. Wow. So I, I remember I paid six dollars for those at a thrift store, and I was hoping to get more for them. I really was, and again, it was they were kind of big, and they just sat around and sat around. So I was, I was happy with whatever I could get for those. So. I don't know. It's just like if stuff sits around too long, it bums me out. So yeah. <laughs> that's why I'd call it a dud. Love it. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's good to piece out parts of uh, popular games. Other times they'd be end up in our dud pile. 
Well, if you see parts of a game in my store, it means I didn't make sure all the parts were there before <laughs> I bought it. So I call that a dud because, you know, I don't have, I like to, $20 is my minimum goal for everything I have in my store. I don't like to sell anything less than $20. And so you can see my price point is very low too. So <laughs> I'm getting things for a dollar and two dollars, but time is also money. Yes. Thank you. So the time it's taking me to break out this and do like all the different listings for all the different parts of this game versus one listing for a game where I could get a good price for it. So that's why I consider that a dud. So uh, you you briefly touched on it a little bit, but uh, so you're you're a great online seller, but you have another interest and uh, thing you do. And uh, Debbie and I were listening to it pre you coming on. So what else do you do? Well, uh, my darling husband Pete and I also well we also we have a rock band, but our thing that we really do a lot and have a lot of fun with is we have a little duo, a musical acoustic duo called the Suburbans. And we dress up in very retro styles. He kind of gets a Buddy Holly vibe. Ooh. And I have a large beehive wig um, and some awesome vintage dresses and stuff. And he plays acoustic guitar. And I play an instrument called the melodica, which is a kind of just a little keyboard that you blow into. Oh. And we go around town dressed up in our clothes and we play music popular music from standards up till very, very current music you would hear on the radio today. Cool. At breweries and we've had a couple of good, uh, we play at the county fair and um, just a lot of different fun places. So that's that's our gig. It's so really how fun. often between the two bands, how often do you guys play uh, gigs? Well, mostly we do the Suburbans because the other band, the guys are just so busy all the time. We only play maybe three or four times a year out with them. But the Suburbans, were, we would like to do maybe two to three shows a month. And we did that here in the month of September, which was really fun. Oh, wow. Good. How cool. And uh, I've also been told in the chat that you have a great uh, Instagram well, I just, you know, social media is a struggle for me. It's a real struggle. Um, I, I, I have a hard time spending time on it because I don't see the actual return on investment. So I neglect my social media and then I'll get all fired up and do a bunch of fun things and, and then I'll circle back and not do anything. So I'm open to, you know, learning more about social media and how to find out whether my efforts are actually resulting in sales. So Juanita says, belt something out, Seaster. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Acapella, no, that'd be kind of rough. No, I, and I would never do that to anybody. I, you know, It's like when you walk up to a comedian and go, tell me something funny. <laughs> but uh, I think, uh, I don't know if you posted the, the link to our website. I don't know if you can do that or yeah, anybody I, could I, do I, that too. You can go on our website, thesuburbansmusic.com, and there's some video and audio and fun photos and stuff there if you want to check that out. Cool. And, and the chat's bummed that there was no wig tonight because you have us. Uh, well, I have the wig is here with me. Oh, you. can I make a guess up here? Cool. We'll oh. end on the wig. <laughs> yes. Oh, this is this is good. The first time on the thrifting business, we have a wig. Ta-da! <laughs> so wig guest. <laughs> She's large. She's in charge. She goes with me every time we, you know, perform out. I'm wearing this wig, if you nice. can believe it. Uh, and it's so fun. I love dressing up in costumes and going out in public and performing. And to be able to do that with my spouse is amazing. And, uh, you know, life is good. So I just want to show my T-shirt super quick. <laughs> I says I do what I want. You, can you guys see that or is it backwards? Oh, yeah. No, it's, yeah it's we, good. We, we see it forwards. I do what I want. This is a unicorn. It's a girl unicorn. You can tell by her shoes. She's flipping everyone off and she farts rainbows. And so I encourage each and every one of you to embrace your inner unicorn and do what you want. 
do what you want, live your authentic life. It's super important and you'll just be so happy. You'll be, you'll feel yes. better about your life. I'm getting myself some peak high heels. I love those. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I, I can't think of a better thing to end on. So that was awesome. Yes. So th thank you, Cecilia, for coming on tonight. Uh, I will make sure the link uh, to your uh, the Suburbans is posted. Everyone, if you're in the San Diego area and you see the Suburbans playing playing out, go check them out for sure. And uh, what's your uh, what's your eBay ID again, Cecilia? My eBay store is Retro Resale. So nice. check that out. And as you can see, she sells some amazing stuff. So if not, if you don't now, if you don't even buy from her, but just follow her, so you know what cool shit's out there. But if you see something you like. Buy something from her. Yes. Awesome. So thank you, Cecilia. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. Thanks, for all everybody. Of you watching live. Those of you watching after the fact. Okay, don't forget. If you're in Cleveland, go see my mom's garage sale tomorrow and Saturday. Get a cocktail, buy some stuff. The mom and I will be on uh selling past your expiration date on Sunday, talking about how to have a season ending garage sale and blow out your stuff. And then next Thursday, we'll be talking to Eddie from Sizely. I'll be in Houston after that, teaching classes. Ecom after that. If you want to join any of those things and you don't know where to find it, just drop me a note on Facebook. Time. I'm happy to point you in the right direction. Yes. Thank all you, right, everybody. everybody. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you very much. And we'll see you all on Sunday. Bye-bye.